Hi, this is Matt at AppWorks, and I'm showing a new feature in FileMaker Pro 19.1. And it's a feature to create an, a database with a very, very different experience than what we're used to in FileMaker. Here is how you access it. You just go to File, Create New. And by the way, in order to do this, you have to have one thing set. You have to have, in preferences, you have to have the Use Advanced Tools unchecked. So that's the default when you first install FileMaker, but for most of us as developers, the first thing we do is check that box. So what we get is this. If we click blank and click Create and call it TestDB, we get a brand new screen that we've never seen before with many, maybe all, many of the same tools that FileMaker has, but in a completely different way and a much simpler way to use them and to interact. Here's how it works. Let's do a simple one, and then we'll come back and do a little bit more. So first of all, it automatically makes a table, just as we've seen. We, it, it cr comes up with a default uh, detail layout, and it breaks it into these three panes, sort of a header, and then two areas into the body section. And it creates our standard fields that we're used to. We can create new fields um, just by adding a new one by clicking plus and make something like name. And we can click add to this layout and then click create and close. In this case, we're going to do something really simple. Um, the field automatically goes to the layout. And we can do other things too that we're going to get to in a minute. Um, but just to show you kind of how this works, once we click done and click continue, at this point, we can no longer get to that other interface. So now we're just in regular FileMaker um, tools to, to edit a database. So we get this tool for show and hide the panes. Um, we can turn those back on. And if we go to Manage Database, we can see the table that was created with the fields that we're used to, plus the one we made. And the graph is, just has the one table. OK, so let's start over again and slow down and take a look at some of these tools. So I'll go New Database, Blank, Create, Second test. Now, the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to make, I'll leave this first table alone. I'm going to click New Layout and make a new table. So I'll click New Table. And the new table, I'll call it um, Contact. And then it'll be Contact Detail. It'll be a form view, not list. And then this is something I really love. OK, so you can choose desktop, tablet, mobile, or custom. And in desktop, you get choices that are very modern, including 4K. In tablet, for the first time, we get choices of current generation iPads. In mobile, just as you'd expect, you actually see current generation iPhones. So in FileMaker, you might may or may not be aware, but the layouts that you get for iPad and mobile are from many generations ago. Uh, and they've just been there, and you can easily change them. But this is great that we actually have current generation iPhone 11 in here. So I'll make go back to desktop and make this one for, um, say, 720p. When I click Create, it's going to create this new table and make my layout. And then I can start creating fields. So I'll make a field called First Name. And I'm going to slow down here because some, there's a couple things I really like to see. I can choose my field type. These are the same ones we normally would get in FileMaker, but it's a simpler way to make them. And I can also click this box, Add Field to New Layout. So I'll click Create. Another option here is Create and Close. Last name. Phone. Email. And I'm going to do another really fun one. Uh, very commonly in FileMaker, what we would do is we would make a calculated field that concatenates first name and last name together. I was surprised and very pleased that this actually features the ability to not only make um, uh, standard fields, but you can actually also make a calculation. So I can choose calculation, and I'll call this full name. Spell it correctly. Now, down here, I can see my calculation. And when I click here, it actually shows me my fields. So this is going to be first name and a space. And what we don't see is it doesn't show that field anymore, but I can actually just type it. I have a little FX box, and that brings up a function so I can use different FileMaker calculations. And I have this icon, which um, chooses uh, some, some fields. And this is where I'm going to just click and choose last name. And that then concatenates those two things together. That way I don't have to type it. Here's what I love. I always miss that little box in the bottom left corner of the calculation dialog 
when you're making a new calculation, it defaults always to uh, to number. And this one defaults to text, but it's really easy for me to change. And I don't forget to do it because of where I'm seeing it. I'm going to create this one. Let's say we're going to have another field like, um, like a contact type. Well, one of the things we get here is we get a some other choices other than just plain text. We get drop-down list, and I can create a value list right here. So I'll click Use Custom Values, and I'll just create a value for employee, customer, and vendor. Oh yeah, look at that. <laughs> I spelled it wrong, and it gave me a, um, a, a correction, which was beautiful. So I'll go ahead and click Create on that one. And then one other thing I'll do is uh, take a look at some other things we get. So I'll make a, we can see the standard ones we would see, pop-up menu, radio button. But I want to make a container field. So I'll put like image and create that. Now at this point I'm done, so I'll click Create and Close. All the fields go to my layout. They all come out perfectly in theme. It put what it could on the left side, and when it kind of finished up, it moved them over. Um, let's say I want on my layout to put a logo in the top left corner. So these tools up here we're going to talk about now. So um, the first ones over on the left of the bar are things that you can drag new things out. So if I want to drag a little text widget down here, I can just drag and drop it. Notice that when I'm dragging it, when I get to a place that's illegal, it'll turn red. Like down here, there's no place for it to go because it's full, but over here there's space. This is really important when I get to uh, an image. So if I grab my image feature down here and I want to put an image like to, to the left, it won't fit because it needs to be a little bit larger. So all I have to do is I'll click on, on that and delete it. Grab this line and make it much larger. And then when I grab my image, it'll go down there. And I can move it to the left of this. And it automatically moves over my layout, uh, my layout name. And then I can just drag that up. Now. We notice that we have a pane over on the left, which has the normal things that we're used to seeing, uh, specifically in this case, simplified, and only the fields. We can toggle that with this button here. On the right, we have a little paint icon. And this toggles over um, a pane on the right with, with similar things. Notice the really nice animation. So I want to choose a, a logo. So I'll just click Choose. And then from my desktop, I have the AppWorks logo right here. I'll put that in. And then it just puts it right onto the layout. Um, on, on a given uh, object on the layout, I have tools that I'm used to seeing. Uh, this defaults to a new theme uh, that comes with FileMaker 19.1, a really beautiful theme we're already using for things. And I can say I want this to be 24 point or maybe 32 point, you know, a larger size. And it also defaults to Helvetica New, which is a font that's been around for a long time. It's a really nice choice. And we see the standard things for top of line, left of line, um, bold italic underline, etc. So interestingly, we don't see the theme, right? So we don't actually see the, the choices for themes here. We're just seeing um, the direct editing of things uh, on the layout. However, if we don't mess with things, everything is going to be within the default theme in FileMaker. So then I can start playing with things here. Like I'm going to make this a little narrower. I'll move uh, this one up to the top. If I want to have my metrics be a little bit different, um, I can grab this widget and make it narrower, and all of my fields get narrower along with it, which I really love. So there's so much simplicity uh, in this. I'll make this a little narrow as well because I want these to fit on that first line, and it automatically goes right up to that first line and tells me how it works. Then I've got sort of a gutter in between. Um, so I can just move this over, and it just kind of automatically snaps to fit. My image field I can make much larger. It automatically moves things around. So it's really making a lot of intelligent decisions about how I want this layout to look. Well, let's say I want to now build a contact list. And let's presume that I want to actually do that not for desktop, but for, say, iPad. I'll just click um, New Layout up here. Choose a name for it, Contact List. Choose the table. And we're going to get to this new table option here shortly. Uh, I think we covered it a little bit already. And click uh, Tablet. And then I'll choose iPad Pro 10.5 inch. Then I'll put it in List View. And then click Create. Interestingly, this still puts it into like a tall layout. But it actually does make it a list 
uh, format. So I'll say I only want one column, so I delete that one, make this one wider, and then just put in my first name and last name. By the way, uh, I'm sure there's a way to do it, but I haven't yet easily found a way to put the header on, above the line, so I'll have to do that um, after it gets, gets into FileMaker, uh, the standard tool that we're used to. Okay, so there's, um, I want to get that a little bit better adjusted. There's my first name and last name, and then I can just go down to the bottom and kind of drag this up and change the size of my layout here if I want to, but I can also do that later on in the normal tool that I'm used to. Notice also that if I wanted to create a footer on this layout, I just have to check, check this box and it will create a footer and automatically do it. Um, if I try to remove it, it says, hey, you sure you want to remove the layout part? Just like you'd expect. So, um, other things that we see that are pretty different than FileMaker, if I want to add an object, I drag it out to the layout rather than just click it and then click on my layout. So that's pretty interesting. Also, you can either click it and just hit the delete or click it and hit the trash can. Um, up here, we see two buttons. These are undo and redo. So I can just undo, 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 and it's undoing the changes I've just made or redo, 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 just as you, again, would expect. But usually those are uh, in the menu, um, in the edit menu. And I really like that they're present there. Clearly, this is designed for someone who's not familiar with all of the rich tools we have and are used to in FileMaker. Um, and it's a really beautiful experience. You know, I don't think I mentioned at the beginning, but this is actually only for the Mac version of FileMaker Pro 19.1 at this point. I presume it's going to be coming to Windows at some point, but for right now, this is actually a, a Mac only feature. So let's see if we want to make another layout. What would we do? I would just click New Layout. And this time I want to make a new table. I'm going to make an invoice table. Make an invoice detail. Click the new table checkbox. Uh, type the name of my table. Choose the format. I'm going to make it 1080 or 720p again. This is going to be form view. It creates my layout very quickly. Makes my standard fields. I'm going to make a new one called ID company, or um, actually contact. Click the checkbox to add it. I'm going to make invoice type. This one's going to be a radio button, because we haven't looked at that feature yet. And I'll use custom values again. And I'm going to call this consulting or product. Um, then I'm going to go to another field, which is going to be quantity, which is a number field. And we get some new choices here, right? So we get thousand separator, highlight, negative numbers, things like that. So maybe I want to do that because you can have a negative quantity, say, for a return. Um, I'm going to make another field called price. Price is going to be a thousand separator field. And I'm going to format it as a currency. So I can actually put a symbol in. And I can highlight negative numbers here again as well. Um, so if I want a currency, I can just put a dollar sign. And another field that I'm going to make is total. That's going to be quantity times price. This one's going to be calculation. And then we'll see the same fields, right? So we see uh, down here, if I scroll down, um, it lists all my fields and also all of my um, math. But the fields come up at the top of the list. It doesn't seem to have type ahead. So if I type in QT, oh, you know what it does? In an earlier version, that, that didn't work for me. So there's quantity times. This is where it doesn't do type ahead. So if I type in price, it doesn't it doesn't do that. So here I need to choose um, this, this button here. And then I can probably. Um, uh, scroll through my list, and this one only shows me fields, and I can easily do quantity times price. Result is number. I love that I don't forget that. And then let's just say we're done with this one at this point. So I'll click. Uh, oh, you know what? We need one more field. We need um, we need like a like the name of the product we're selling. So we'll go back to text and call it product name. Or actually, it's really invoice description. 
and create and close. And now all of those fields will be added to my layout. I get my radio button just as I'd want to see it. Um, and we can take a look at some other tools. So let's say on this one I want three panes. I want the left pane to be an invoice date, which I actually forgot to make. Let's make invoice date. And just put a date field. And then I get also some date formats. Every new thing that you click in this is a delight, and you find all these features that are fairly deep in adding them to FileMaker, but they're just exactly where you'd want them to be. This is really a great tool. So I add invoice date. It'll just put it on my layout. I want that actually to be over here. So I'm going to start moving things. Um, I'm going to add a middle pane. So I drag a middle pane. And I can size it uh, the way that I want uh, just by clicking on the little edge. I'm going to grab, I don't really need contact on here. Um, I do need the type. And I want the type actually to be over here. I want the date to be on the left at the top. I want the quantity and the price and the total to be in the middle. And I want the description to be here and to be nice and large. Um, yeah, that's pretty good. This one can be probably much smaller, so I can kind of uh, mess with that a little bit. I'll move this one over and then make the uh, left pane nice and large because I want uh, invoice description to be clear. So that's a pretty simple way to get metrics. And when I click Done up here in the top right corner, it's cut off, um, it'll uh, now complete everything that I've done. So it just created a database, created two tables, created all the layouts that I made. Um, it didn't give me any sample data, but we can just create a record. It does not make anything in the graph. So it makes my initial database name uh, table, which I'm not going to use. But then all I have to do is just connect these two. So like the, the key from contact to the primary key over here. Uh, and then I can go ahead in the normal FileMaker tools and do things like add portals. Portals I have not found in this new tool. I wouldn't maybe expect them to be there because that's really more of an advanced feature. But this is a really great new thing, brand new in FileMaker 19.1. Thanks very much for your time.